Hi and welcome back to a completely different type of video today. No card making, no art journaling. I'm going to create a home decor. I'm still in the process of decorating my craft room and I wanted to create something that has to do with flowers that look quite realistic in a shadow box. I'm planning to make three of them so I have a trio on my wall. So I'm going to share today the first one and if you have fun and uh, get inspired let me know in the comments below as I can feel the next two projects that I have planned. The dyes I will be playing with are the oriental lilies. These are in a set you will get the boots as well as two dyes that cut out your petals, one for cutting out the stamen and one dye that cuts out three leaves. These flowers are very easy to put together, although this is one of the realistic uh, flower collections by Spellbinders and some can be really intricate and take lots of time to put together. This one is the easiest of them all. So all you have to do is to die cut those petals just once to create one flower. Then you can die cut the stamen die and uh, you can cut out everything from white cardstock like I'm doing here and then you can color everything with your markers. I'm going to uh, cut out a bunch of leaves and for them I'm starting with uh, dark green cardstock and um, since I'm going to run my platform through the die cutting machine I better get as many die cuts as I can. I will show you step by step how I put together this flower and I'm starting by adding a touch of pale pink at the center of the petals. I'm starting from the center and adding some brush strokes making sure that I don't cover up completely the whole petal. I want that to st main mainly stay white. Now in the Spellbinders YouTube channel you will find videos on how you can put all those uh, three dimensional flowers that are designed by Susan. They are step-by-step -step videos, very easy to follow, I made sure to check them out, but of course you can be creative and add your very own touch. Now I'm going to bring another marker, this time I'm using a pale orange or a dark yellow. I am going to add a little bit at the center, I'm not covering up as much area as I did with um, the pink one. And this is uh, going to kind of oversaturate the center of the petals. The project I'm making today is great for home decor, which is exactly what I'm going to use it for, as well as for a gift. And um, you can definitely put those flowers on top of a card if you like, uh, but uh, it is going to turn out quite dimensional. Now I'm using a Prismacolor pencil that I have sharpened into a very fine tip, and I'm going to use that to add some dots on my petals. Now, since this is a project that is going up on my wall, I want to be quite detailed. I'm taking my time, enjoying the process. After all, this is a project that I will be looking at every day. If you want to know the exact name of the Prismacolor pencil that I'm using here is Crimson Lake. That's PC925, but it really doesn't matter. All you need is a dark red pencil. And I will repeat the same process on the other die cut. Now I will be working with my tool in one and the different nibs that you get from the ultimate set so that I can add some dimension and uh, actually sculpt all those petals. First of all I'm adding a stroke at the center of all these leaves. I'm going to fold them back and then bring in my Prismacolor pencil again so that I can add a line at that crease. If you go online and look for color variations for oriental lilies you will find a ton of them. And here's a photo of one, similar to what I'm trying to create here. I draw the line and then I'm going to fold the petals back up. I will use my reversible tweezers and my tool-in-one with the ball nib at the end so that I can add a little bit of dimension at the tip of each of the petals. If you go to the Spellbinders website and look for the collection, which is called Susan's Garden, you will find an amazing collection of three-dimensional flowers. Other of them take more time to put together. This is one of the easiest ones, since it only has six petals. But they are all so much fun. They make a gorgeous flowers that you can not only use for home decor or for your card making, you can also use them for gift decoration purposes, so you can stick one of those wonderful flowers at the top of a box or on a gift bag. 
And here is how it looks all finished. Just stick one inside the other. Just beautiful. Now I'm going to work on the stamen and I will show you how easy it is to put together. I'm just going to add some color and uh, I'm following the photo. So the main part is going to be green and the tips are going to be orange. For adding color, I'm just using my alcohol markers. And at the tips of these dies, you can either leave them as they are, you can stick a little bit of flock if you like, which is something that Susan does, and they turn just gorgeous. I didn't have any in my stash, so I'm just going to use glitter. So now I'm going to hold that die from the side. At the bottom, I'm going to add a line of glue, and then I'm going to wrap it around the tip of my tweezers. Hold it for a few seconds until the glue is set. Then I'm going to fluff it up and it's ready to go at the center of my flower. Now here is where I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of shine at the center. So I'm just going to dip it in glue and stick it inside my jar of um, glitter. Then dip the bottom on glue and stick it at the center. Just hold it there for a few seconds until the glue is set. Now I repeat this process to create two more identical flowers. And now let's move on to the leaves and uh, let's see what I did for them. They are really easy to put together and add some dimension. Again, I'm going to use my tool in one with uh, one of the um, tools at the tip to draw a line at the center of the leaves all the way from the top to the bottom. Then you can use your fingers and fold them in half, making sure that the good side is at the top. So I have a mountain there. And uh, if you find that these uh, leaves are quite small for your hands to fold them in half, just use your tweezers. Now I'm going to use very light green Distress Oxide ink and I know that Distress Oxide ink stays nicely on top of dark uh, cardstock. So I'm just going to swipe at that peak, at the top of the mountain. Then I'm folding that leaf back up. And now I can use the ball tip to add some dimension at the tip if I want to. Now Susan in her videos is using pan pastels for that uh, lighter green uh, line at the center of the leaves. But if you have Distress Oxide ink, it does the same job. If you find creating those dimensional flowers uh, really satisfying and fun, then I would definitely recommend to get the ultimate kit for uh, Susan's Garden collection. So you will get the tool-in-one with loads and loads of nibs. There are some for creating indentations on the leaves and the flowers. There are others with uh, ball tips. All making paper sculpting are really easy. So here is what comes in that ultimate kit along with the tool-in-one and the nibs. You will get tweezers, reversible tweezers, all with very fine tips, a pair of scissors, and then you get mats that you can work on. A non-stick one for coloring, a white one for creating indentations, and the foamy one for creating all that dimension. And they all come in a lovely zipper bag, nicely organized. I'm absolutely in love with this kit. Anyway, now I am going to work on the boots. For that, I just die cut them twice out of um, light yellow cardstock. As they are, they look quite flat, so I need to add some shadows to turn them kind of um, dimensional and more realistic. After all, I do have very dimensional flowers to go with those. So I'm just playing here with my Distress Oxide inks, adding shadows and trying to decide how it's going to look better. I do have two sets because I'm planning to cut out the bottom from one of the sets of the boots and stick them on top of the other. This is going to give it some dimension and at the same time you will be able to see a different color at the bottom. There is also an indentation when you cut out those boots so I know exactly where I am supposed to cut out. After playing with the Distress Oxide inks I decided that I wanted the bottom part to be dark brown. So when I place it there it's going to look like that. And then for the top boots, the ones that you are actually going to see, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide and I believe that, that was uh, Wild Honey. And uh, I'm going to add some shadows. 
Just by using my burly art glue at the back, I'm going to stick one on top of the other. This is going to make it sturdier, thicker, and it's going to look absolutely stunning. I think at this stage the only thing that is missing is some shine of those boots. You can add that by glazing all over the boots, or if you want, you can do what I did. I'm just going to go over them with my Versamark ink, make sure that it is uh, all nice and wet, and then I'm going to apply on top clear embossing powder. I'm making sure that all the parts of the boots everywhere is completely covered with my clear embossing powder, and then I'm bringing in my heat gun and make sure that everything is melted. And sometimes just one extra step on an element really brings it to life. That shine on those boots really made them come to life. Now I'm going to work on my background. For that I decided to stay quite simple. I'm not going to do any very involved mixed media background here. So all I did was just spray with light blue Distress Oxide ink. I'm also adding some uh, splashes. I do add more water to help that uh, ink move around. And uh, I'm just going to dry it completely. Now to keep everything quite subtle, but at the same time add some interest at the background, I'm doing some stamping. I'm using the same color of Distress Oxide ink that I used for, uh, the sp for spraying my background. And I'm just stamping here and there in different areas. It is very subtle, but still it's there. It adds a touch of uh, visual texture. Now the wooden frames that I like to use are about 8x8 eight eight in size. The inside area is slightly smaller. I did measure my, the watercolor paper uh, before I went and uh, spray on top so that uh, it fits perfectly inside. Now all I have to do is to put the whole thing together and I did add a foam tape at the back of those boots so to keep them kind of dimensional in a curve. By the way, those wooden frames are uh, a come in a bulk and I get them from Amazon. They are in a great price. If you want to check them out, I will leave a link below. But there are many brands of them. I like them because you can create easily shadow boxes and I don't actually like shadow boxes that have a glass on top. Although it keeps your project from um, protected from dust, I don't like that glare. So I prefer having it like that. Now, as you can see, I already have my flowers down. I'm going to embellish them with leaves all around. And of course, if you have more sets of uh, flower dyes from uh, Susan's garden, you can even mix and match flowers and leaves to make it look fuller. Or if you don't, you can use the same dyes to create identical flowers, but in different colors. Now, I always like to have a motivational quote in my art. That's why I went with one of the Tim Holtz stickers. This one says there is beauty in simplicity and I think it is perfect for this project. I had so much fun creating this project. It's going straight on my wall and I do have plans for creating two more. I have already chosen the flowers. I'm going to link down below to the whole collection by Susan's. I'm sure you will have lots of fun checking them out and you will probably find your favorite flower. So I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment and like the video if you did and also leave me a comment down below and let me know if you want to see the two extra projects that I'm planning to do for a full trio on my wall. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.